It's necessary to take those diet breaks at certain periods throughout the year if you want to see maximum fat loss results. Welcome back to the channel. I am Melissa and this is Jessica. And today we are going to talk about how to calculate your maintenance calories. Before we get into the video, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so you're notified when a new video drops and comment below if you want the chance to win $50. You just rattle that off like a pro. It's because I pay attention. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. You're floating around in la la land. Okay. It's been eight months. Okay. And you still are asking me to do the intro. No, I do. I just like, so my, my problem, I'm not asking you to do the intro. I can definitely do the intro. You just told me that I did a good job of doing it you on did. our last video. You so did. there's that. Okay. In this video today, we're going to talk about how to calculate your maintenance calories. It's important to understand why we're calculating your maintenance calories. If you watched our video on why this is the best time of year to reverse diet, you'll, you'll understand why we start to increase calories back to maintenance. So make sure you go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Essentially to kind of sum it up, this time of year is really busy. There's holidays, there's multiple holidays coming up and there's just so much going on and you're faced with a lot of like overindulgent foods that you typically wouldn't be faced with throughout the year. Because you can't diet forever, we at some point need to like take diet breaks. We figured that this is the best time of year really to reverse diet our clients so that they have more calories, they're going through the, ho the holidays able to eat more. They're not going to gain weight because they're eating at maintenance. They can essentially like coast through the holidays, enjoy themselves and not go into January, you know, 10, 20 pounds heavier like they would every other year. I think getting into it and just to kind of like quickly recap on that other video, right? Like you said, we can't diet forever from like a physiological side, right? So many different adaptations happen in your body. Your metabolism slows down, thyroid starts to slow down, hormones like get all thrown out of whack. You start to develop a lot more cravings. You're hungry all the time. Even sometimes you're gonna hit that plateau on the scale and nothing's moving, so you get frustrated. And then if you look at it from the mental side of things too, like a lot of times you end up with diet burnout, right? Where you're kind of bored, you're sick of counting calories, like you're sick of not being able to eat all of the foods. In both cases, both from a physiological perspective and from a mental and emotional perspective, it's necessary to take those diet breaks at certain periods throughout the year if you want to see maximum fat loss results. Like you were saying, what better time of the year to take one of those diet breaks than during the most indulgent and fun periods of like the entire year. Yeah, right. So I think that we already kind of like talked about why we reverse diet in the other video and actually like why you're at maintenance during this time of year. Mm -hmm. Let's just kind of talk about how do we calculate our maintenance calories? How do you determine what that number is? So I don't love giving any type of generic formulas out, right? Because you can Google, you know, you can Google anything, how to calculate my maintenance calories, my fat loss calories. And a lot of times it's just going to spit out like a generic number. And that number does not take into consideration anything about you. It doesn't take into consideration, you know, where you're at mentally, how long you've been dieting, your dieting history before this, like how many yo-yo diets you've done, how much weight you've lost and gained back. Like if you're even ready mm -hmm. for a reverse diet. So my disclaimer is I don't love giving out generic formulas and, and they don't work for everybody. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like anyone that you go to that does just say, Oh, to calculate your maintenance calories, you're going to do this times this and it's this. And like, there you go. It's not true. It really varies person by person. Like if you think about it, literally none of you are the same. Right. And so how can you expect to have the same formula applied to every single person? It doesn't work that way. That being said though, I definitely understand like feeling feeling lost and not having any idea where to start and wanting some general sense of like, well, how can I at least get like a range or an idea of what my maintenance calories would look like? In order to calculate maintenance calories in a very generic sense, we recommend multiplying your current body weight times anywhere between like 13 to 15. If you're someone who is significantly overweight or somebody who's been, you know, has a chronic dieting history or you've been dieting for a long time, let's start with multiplying your body weight times 13. If you're someone who's already like very lean or you know you have been slowly reverse dieting, you're already eating a higher number of calories, then we'll be looking at multiplying your body weight times 15 or like you're super active, right? Then body weight times 15. And when we reverse diet, we do, what we don't want to do is jump from a calorie deficit where you're eating a very low number of calories and then just automatically jump up to that high number of calories that you calculated by multiplying, multiplying your body weight by 13 to 15. We want to like slowly start titrating those calories up in a way that's going to allow your metabolism, you know, your body to start to process that yeah, level it's of calories like and the reverse adaptation. Yeah. 
And so if you think about when we talk about like your body is adapting to like lower and lower calories. So if you think about it in the reverse way, as like you're slowly increasing your calories, your body's adapting to that and saying, okay, we're cool here. Okay, we're cool here. Okay, we're good here. Let's coast on this. This is gonna be our maintenance calories to get us through. This is why it is important to have a coach to kind of like guide you through this. But if you are doing it on your own, you'll be able to say, okay, like I've been at this maintenance for a little bit. If you are starting to gain weight, like, at like week over week you're gaining, yeah. like you went too far and you wanna bring it back down a little bit. If you're losing weight, like you're not there yet. So you kind of, it's almost like trial and error. And what you don't wanna do is like be in maintenance for like a short period of time and then be like, okay, back to a calorie yeah. deficit. Like how long should we like be in a, a maintenance well, phase? Just in order to get to that maintenance level of calories, what I would recommend, like you were saying, of like, you, it's kind of trial and error. So I would start by increasing calories by like 100 to 150 calories like every day for a week. So if you're starting at, let's say 1800 calories, you know, next week you're gonna start at 1950 calories, like daily calories, okay? And then the week after that, we might bump it up to like 20, you know, 20, 2050 or 2100 calories and just see how your body's responding to those like small 150 calorie daily increments each week. Like you said, if you are still losing weight, then we can continue to increase. If you are, you know, gaining weight rapidly, then we might want to consider like pulling back down and only increasing by like, you know, 50 to 100 calories, somewhere in that range. But that's why it's so important to like monitor how your body is reacting to that. And it's not just from a scale perspective. We want to consider like, are we still losing inches? Are my clothes you know fitting better are they fitting tighter how am i just feeling like overall in general right like is my digestion okay from supporting higher level of calories am i sleeping okay right those are all the things that you want to consider but either way you're right one of the most damaging things that you can do is go from a place of like i've been dieting for the last 10 months and then i did a quick like six week maintenance and i'm gonna go right back into dieting right so every stressful period right and dieting is a stressful period on your body needs like a de-stress period we recommend like equal amounts of time in each period so if you've dieted for the last four months then we would suggest spending four months at maintenance let's talk about some of the things that you can expect yeah. like at maintenance calories yeah right? well i think and this is something that's like really hard even for some of our clients to wrap their head around because we, we're like you're in a maintenance phase so like okay but the scale's not going down and i'm like exactly okay right like it, sh it shouldn't be when you are in a maintenance phase when you are reverse dieting you almost want to like change like the expected outcome. So many of you for years have been fixated on like, I need to be smaller, smaller, smaller. The scale has to go down, down, down. And no one's ever told you like, it's actually normal and like you really healthy for you to be at maintenance and like eat at maintenance level and like not have the scale move in either direction. You wanna change like your expectations. So during a maintenance phase, you should not expect the scale to go down. You can expect your body to change. This is called a body recomposition. So if you're strength training, if you're working out really hard and you're eating at maintenance, your body will likely change. And you might look like you've lost a bunch of weight by the time you're done with your maintenance period, but the scale might not really move. So it just kind of depends on like what you're fixated on. Like losing inches, right? And that's why we say like, continue with exactly. the body measurements, continue like assessing how your clothes are fitting. like. It might be normal to, you know, even gain a pound or two, right? Because we might be slowly adding on muscle tissue, right? And, you know, not adding on additional body fat. That's the goal of maintenance, right? Is to maintain your current level of like where you're at. The same way that like, even when you're in a dieting phase, the scale fluctuates up and down. It's gonna be the same thing when you're at maintenance. The scale will fluctuate up and down. What you don't wanna do is like step on the scale and it's up like a pound or two and you're like, oh my God, nope, I have to cut my calories. Like it's normal, just like it's normal at every every phase of like dieting, maintenance or surplus, like that's going to happen. It's, it's completely normal. So don't freak out about that. Like what you don't wanna see, right, is like if the scale's like up, you know, a pound and a half one week and then the next week it's up another pound and a half and another pound and a half and we're just yeah. slowly in building. Increasing. That's why it's important to track it, mm -hmm. right? But if like you have that normal fluctuation, that's yep. not anything to worry about. Yeah. You also want to pay attention to your biofeedback during a maintenance phase, things like your energy, is your energy improving? It will. 
sleep, as your sleep improving, it will, digestion should be improving, your stress should be reduced because you're you're giving your body more fuel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not it's not fuel deprived, so the cortisol levels will be down a little bit. Even yeah. like food freedom and flexibility, right? During a maintenance phase, your calories are going to be higher than when you're in a calorie deficit in a dieting phase. So you'll have more food freedom, more like food flexibility. And again, going back to what we started at the beginning of the video, like how we started the video, is this is really one of the best times of the year to like start calculating your maintenance calories and move into that maintenance phase because you have a lot more food freedom, flexibility, and opportunities to like responsibly indulge during the holidays. So that's why we always suggest to our clients, like now is the time to, you know, jump into a maintenance phase. So if you wanna know how to calculate your maintenance calories, then you can either use the generic formula that we gave you here in this video, or you can go ahead and check out our custom calorie cycling templates that we just launched a couple of weeks ago. In those templates, we're gonna give you the exact details that you need to calculate your own custom maintenance calories and understand the steps that you need to take in order to slowly reverse diet yourself up to maintenance levels without having to worry about gaining weight. So highly suggest you check that out. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions and we're excited to watch your reverse diet journey.